one quick composition tip and a workflow. Not much else to say. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 92 of Understanding Dark Table. On the podcast last week, I was talking to Glenn about the fact that not being able to travel a great deal has kind of had me not wanting to pick up the camera a great deal. Because where I live, I, I know what everything looks like, so I tend not to shoot a whole lot. And he said, the best challenge you can give yourself is to go out into your backyard and force yourself to find something interesting to shoot. So over the weekend, I thought, okay, sure, give it a go. And so I went out and I shot a bunch of images, which you can see in my light table view here. Uh, by the way, the version that I'm running here is 3.5. Uh, and I'm going to do this video in 3.5 simply because I've already imported these images into 3.5 and I haven't imported them into 3.4.1. And given that we're only a month away from 3.6, I figure, yeah, it's okay. So my one composition tip, because I, I, I don't want to turn this channel into a how to shoot channel because there are plenty of other photographers who are way better than me who would probably do a much better job of that. But the first image I shot was this one here. And whilst the seeds of the basil plant, they stand out to a certain degree because depth of field helps them stand out because they're in focus and everything else is not. As soon as I took this frame, I thought to myself, can I do something to improve the contrast or to make the basil stand out even more. And it occurred to me, looking down here in the bottom right hand corner, that down below, because these are hanging off the side of my balcony, so they're sort of a, a one story up in the air. And down below, we have a water feature with a couple of black ceramic pots that stand about a meter high, and the water just comes up the middle and flows over the top. So I thought to myself, if I re compose this frame so that the black ceramic pot is behind the seed head of the basil that will help improve the contrast. And so that's what I did. So that was the second frame that I shot. And then the third frame, which I think is pretty similar to this frame, but which I've already processed because I posted it to Instagram a couple of days ago, looks like that. So as you can see, that's certainly a much better image than the first frame that I shot. Now I shot a bunch of other things, but we're just gonna look at this particular image. And so I thought what I would do in this video is start again with this image and reprocess it and just show you the th things that I did. And to be honest, I didn't do a whole lot. So I will, from the duplicate manager, click the original button. That will create a new pristine version of the raw file with a, a sidecar file that has nothing added to it except for of course filmic rgb and color calibration so if we turned filmic rgb off that there is pretty much straight out of camera okay where would i start you guys know me by now 16 by 9 crop absolutely so find my crop and rotate 16 by 9 and I'm just going to crop in a little bit and I'm going to move the seed heads up a little higher in the frame and I'm just going to balance this group of flower or leaves here with this little bit of greenery over here so they've just got that similar weight of margin either side of them and that's pretty much where I want the crop to sit. Okay, next let's have a look at the Filmic RGB module and I'm going to click O on my keyboard to turn on my over and under exposed indicators and 
The next thing I want to do is increase the blacks until I get a little bit of clipping. So I'm just going to drag this back, starting to get some clipping down here in the deep shadows. Might just push the whites a little bit higher, which will mean I can back off that black setting a touch. And probably somewhere about there is where I want to be. Turn my indicators off again. So before and after. I think it was with the release of Darktable 3.2. I think it was with 3.2. Aurelian wrote a post which later became incorporated into the Darktable manual regarding scene referred workflow, which models, uh, modules you should use which modules you should use sparingly and which modules you should avoid altogether. And of course, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I love my tone curve. And guess what? Tone curve is on the no-go list. <laughs> so what do we do? Well, a few people reminded me about that section of the dark table manual one of them was was peter dinan uh, via the comments on the last video and he's posted a link to it in the comments i will also put that link in the video description for this video so if you haven't yet read that particular page of the dark table manual and you're thinking i really should adopt this scene referred workflow thingy then you should definitely go and have a read. So what does the page in the manual recommend in place of the tone curve? It recommends the color balance module. Now, I have an issue there. With a tone curve module, I can add as many nodes to the curve as I want. For example, let me just jump back to... Yeah, there it is right there, right? So I could do something as crazy as that if I wanted to. Or maybe I want to do something that resembles, you know, the old base curve type thing where I've got, you know, multiple nodes that are creating some weird random curve. I can't do that with a color balance module. The tools just aren't there. The color balance module assumes that I just want an S curve and that's it. So devs, please tell me you are working on a scene referred version of a tone curve module, please. Because I quite often add more than two nodes. So that's not what we want. But let's jump back to the workflow scene referred preset. And of course, color balance isn't here because what's about to be you know, released in Darktable 3.6 is this new color balance RGB module. But I don't want to go and use that just yet because we'll cover that when we do Darktable 3.6. So I'm going to jump back to my preset and use the old color balance module. Now, the color balance module gives me both a contrast slider and a contrast fulcrum slider. Now, I did cover this back when I did the color balance module video. And if I understand it correctly, the contrast slider, if I was to jump over to the RGB curve, just do a reset there. That contrast slider allows me to essentially push these nodes up or down in place right let's just say they're they're in these two spots and adjusting that contrast slider will push both of these nodes in opposite directions if if i'm increasing the contrast then you know this first node gets pushed higher the second node gets pushed lower which is first and which is second? There's a good point. 
I could say that this is first because it's closer to the left. You understand what I'm saying. And if I was reducing contrast, then I would be pushing this node higher and this node lower. But basically the, let me just jump back to it. That contrast slider will always keep the center of the S curve running through the middle of that graph. That's my understanding. So as I increase the contrast value in the color balance module, it's essentially the same as doing this, where I am pushing the nodes up or down away from that 45 degree line. The contrast fulcrum is essentially allowing us to bring these sideways, again, keeping the center of that line crossing through the middle so that we increase the angle of that central part of the curve. That is my understanding. Now, the thing to look at though is that the contrast fulcrum says 18%. Now, what that's referring to is 18% being middle gray. In a display referred workflow, that would be 50% for middle gray, but in a scene referred workflow, we refer to middle gray as 18%. That's my understanding. Okay, so I wanna introduce a little bit of contrast using the color balance module because I'm trying to do a scene referred workflow here. So I will increase the contrast, but I've found that I wanna reduce the fulcrum position a little bit because that just lightens everything up as well. And it gives me a much nicer saturation to the greens. If we go back to the version of this image, which I posted on Instagram, have a look at the saturation of the greens in those leaves. That's the version I posted a couple of days ago. Slightly different crop, but yeah, the greens, totally different. I like this. Looks much more vibrant and healthy. Next thing I want to do is to darken the background area here in the top left-hand corner and darken the right-hand side a little just to help draw your eye to this beautiful, vibrant green basil plant. Now, you might be thinking vignette, but the vignette module is on the no-fly list as well. And to be honest, I've not generally used a vignette module in my image processing. I tend to use two instances of a graduated density filter. So what I would do here is go graduated density, and I am just going to draw I always draw these the wrong way around. So graduated density filter, the arrows are pointing in this direction, uh, which is what I want. And just to demonstrate the hardness, just as a reminder, when hardness is set at zero, the graduated density filter basically transitions across the full width of the image. As we increase that hardness, we are reducing the transition band down. So we go from dark to light much quicker. So what I can do is by backing off this density so that I can actually see the background information over there, I can then bring the hardness value up or down so that I get the fall off to be as rapid or as slow as I want. And once I've found that value, which is somewhere in the mid seventies there, I can then just use the density of the filter to introduce as much or as little darkening as I want to that side of the image. Now, that's achieved what I want. I could maybe push it a little harder. There we go. And that's great. But the one thing that bothers me is it's also darkening 
these leaves of the basil plant and I don't want that to happen because I'm trying to draw your eye to the basil and it's drawing attention to itself that these leaves are darker than these leaves up here and that shouldn't be the case. So what I could do is turn this into a parametric mask. We will select the hue channel and what I want to do is target the greens and the yellows because that's where all the color information is for my basil leaves. Probably want to go out a little bit there. And we can just turn that on to see that we are Yep, in fact, grabbing all of the color in the leaves, but we want the inversion of that. So we'll turn that off and click on the polarity and voila, we are now darkening the background, but not darkening the leaves on the basil plant. So that's exactly what I was after. Okay, so that's the left hand side dealt with now. I just need to introduce a second graduated density module. Now, those of you who have noticed this little icon here, that's coming in version 3.6. Whenever you have a parametric mask active on a module, you will get this icon and you can click that and immediately turn the mask on. I love that. Okay, so new instance of the graduated density. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Will I get the direction right this time? Yay, I will. You beauty. Okay, so again, crank up the density, crank up the hardness, get the transition to where I want it. So somewhere about there, so in the mid eighties. And in terms of density, that's close to what I wanted, probably a little bit too dark. I just back that off to about there. And that's pretty much where I wanted it. So before our two graduated density filters, we were there. And with our two graduated density filters, we're now there. So again, all of that. So one, one very simple composition tip of simply getting that black ceramic water feature behind the basil plant to help create some contrast and some separation and then some judicious contrast adjustment and the graduated density filters and we've been able to really accentuate this basil plant and make it jump out of the image haven't gone color popping it's not like i've made everything monochrome behind it although there's not a lot of color information in the background of that image anyway but yeah i really like that so comparing with the version i sent to instagram a couple of days ago yeah, I think my new version is even better. Certainly the greens look much more vibrant and saturated. I really don't think there's anything else I would want to do to that image. I'm pretty happy with that. I thought I was happy with the version I posted two days ago, but now I'm not. <laughs> Alrighty. That is going to do it for this one. Uh, thank you Peter Dinan and everybody else who reminded me about the document that Aurelian had written about, you know, which modules to use and which ones to avoid in a scene referred workflow. Again, devs, please come up with a scene referred version of the tone curve because, you know, I am going to miss that ability to apply more than two points to the curve. I can't do that in the color balance module and I can't do it in the color balance RGB module either. So that's something that needs to be addressed. All right, people, that will do it for this one. Questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below and I will catch you in the next one.